that taken care of. So we got chat box. I'm saying this all out loud. Hello, BR PRB Roxton. I don't know how that's pronounced. Per Broxton. I'm gonna go ahead and switch the uh, switch the screen here because I think uh, it's kind of ready. There we go. Yeah, this is a bit of a late hour. There was some stuff going on. It happens. We all have our lives. Well, not to worry. Sticking with my routine. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, thank you for hosting Darth Raven. Unfortunately, there was a double, um, what is it, a double echo sound effect. Has your channel even reached a thousand? No, it hasn't. Mm. I should also link this to my tweet. Hang on. Twitter. Um. Just give me a minute. that you'll have to excuse my belches a disgusting being I am right now all right well I'm done with that uh, let's see what we get anyone know the TV show Xena oh god that is a title I haven't heard in years god my parents used to watch Xena almost all the time. The thing that I always found iconic of uh, Xena was uh, her her call sound, which goes like yeah 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 something like that. I remember that she made a brief cameo appearance in uh, The Simpsons. It was a, a Halloween special, and she was the one who saved the day, which. I would have to explain the narrative on that one, but some of you may probably remember it because it's it was part of the uh, the Treehouse of Horrors, and a lot of people were fans of that. I suppose I should get a call started. I expect people would be joining soon. Comic book guy came after. Yeah. See, of course your guy knows what I'm talking about. My cousin loves Xena. Yeah. So you've seen bits and pieces of Treehouse Horror ones. Pretty fun bits. Yeah. Not too big on them. I like the, um... Oh, fuck you, Season! Eating ASMR. <laughs> okay, at least when I, like, when I watch ASMR videos... Gosh. <laughs> you guys made two mistakes. One, it was too predictable. Two, I was quiet for a good number of time, uh, like good number of seconds, and I was kind of expecting some noise to pop in. I wasn't trying to scare you. I thought you actually heard me coming in. <laughs> I, I, I finally got a chance me. to use my kazoo on your string, Golden. 
<laughs> That's the only reason why I did it. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> I have tomorrow off and I'm relaxing. Nice. Uh... Murder. <laughs> Murder. <laughs> God damn. Riley, you're doing so much better. Oh, thank you there, Golden. I just like doing Goofy. So, how'd you make Max? Well, you see, Maxie, your daddy doesn't have sex. Your daddy fucks. <laughs> uh, What's the matter there, Miss Kieran? Well, with Jesse, I believe it was. Uh, yup. It's lucky, Goofy. Well, I thought it was Jesse. Oh, yup. Uh, oh. Hi, Faith. Oh, yup. Faith, hi. The demons told me to. Oh, yup. <laughs> Huh. You know, every time I walk into the room when Aeon's in, I'm like, hey, demon, it's me, your boy. <laughs> I should do that from now on every time I'm in this, I walk in the room with Aeon. <laughs> Speaking of which, I, sh I, I need to see him again next week. You sound entertained. Also, if you're hearing some music in the background on my end, I'm playing Pokemon, so do not mind me. I'm, I'm uh, enjoying... Hmm? I'm eating what a little saying? bit of chicken and noodles. Nice. Mm. Nice. Chicken. Nice. <laughs> I'm enjoying some train wreck. Nice. What? How does it taste? It's very fruity, I've noticed. It, it, it's nice. It, it, it goes down very smooth. Very smooth. I don't really cough as much with it. Nani the fuck? I honestly hate that word. Nani? Oh, yep. Because... <laughs> Because the first time I was introduced to that word, um, it was during, um, what was it? It was during my playthrough of Zelda, and I got that mixed up with Navi, and I didn't know yes, that Nani did. meant what. Yes. And because of that, I'm just like, guys, just stick with English, okay? I'm not gonna, like, know your weeaboo Japanese well, we're weeaboos, and we have to speak that otaku language. No, you don't. Riley, I am going to bot you on the I am head. super kawaii. Retro Gamer Kevin, I've only streamed one Zelda game, and that was A Link to the Past. Riley, you better be careful what you say, because you're dealing with someone who's a Japan enthusiast. Y'all abakas. So are you. <laughs> I mean, I know that, but still. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're not afraid to admit it. <laughs> oh, heaven. Now, where was I? Crap. Where am I supposed to go now? So, yeah, after I mentioned, like, you mean, like, Navi? And people are like, no, that means hey, what? listen. Yeah. Hey, listen! Hey, no! Look out! Look out! I'm sorry. I mean, that's pretty much I'm well down to doing that voice. You know, the funny thing is, I never... guy, English, please. The funny thing is, I was never, like, annoyed by Navi as a kid for some reason. I don't know. Oh, I'm kind of surprised, because I know that's, like, one of the things about the game that... Nah, the thing that annoyed me about Ocarina of Time 
was the fucking water temple. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, I totally understand that. I have still yet to beat that game because the last two times I tried navigating the water temple, even with a fucking guidebook, I couldn't get through the thing. That is sad. I know, so when I eventually play it again, I want to be the HD remake only with Rumble because I like the Rumble. I heard that in the... Um... That on the uh, DS3, uh, 3DS remake, excuse me, the 3DS remake, they um, they included, um, they actually update, uh, I heard they updated the dungeon where it's much easier to yeah. navigate. That's they what did. I've heard. I, I, been... I just, I wanted to wait for a, for a version with Rumble, because I'm a Rumble guy. Okay. Well, I can actually agree that that's what happened, because I have the remake. And it is much easier in that that does so now that they hmm. fix that okay. up. Um, but hey, it, blue. Hmm? I will say, I? okay, so while the water temple is a pain in the ass, I cannot stand the shadow temple at all. I, oh, I never God. got to the shadow temple, motherfucker. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. I will say, okay, so the, the navigation on that one was fucking awful. I had to Didn't look at a guidebook like, to, like, yeah. figure out where I'm supposed to go. And then I had to have some assistance from Ellie. There was, like, for instance, there's, like, a huge pit that you have to go across. And I'm like, how the fuck do you get over there? And this whole time we're supposed to throw a bomb near a series of bombs in order to knock a pillar over. Like, I have never encountered that kind of obstacle before. So how the fuck was I supposed to know? And the game Didn't expects you to, like... you to know that. And then there's <laughs> the fucking boss. The dude who, like, oh. uh, I don't know what his name is, but he... Banks on a bunch bongo, of drums. Bongo. Yeah. And he, like, when he goes to attack you, he'll either try to use his hand, well, obviously he'll use his hands, but it's either one of two things. Either he leaves it open to grab you, and that's where you can shoot it in the palm of its hand, or it comes into a fist. But because it moves so fast, you have little time to react. So, you have little room for error. So yeah, Bongo Bongo could suck my balls. What Wasn't that also the play? level where you had to travel back in time within that in that fucking? No, game that was too? the spirit temple. The spirit temple was oh. fucking amazing. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Wait a minute, Golden. Yeah. There is a moment in the sh for the shadow temple where, you, like, as a preparation, because you have to go back in time as a child to go to the well to get the lens of truth in order to get through the <laughs> shadow temple. Oh yeah, that was the other thing. I didn't know about that. You didn't know that part? No, nobody said anything about it. Oh my god. Uh, and, um, when it came to the Shadow Temple, the only reason why I had a hard time going through that one wasn't because it was hard to me. It was because it was terrifying to me. I was more annoyed. I was annoyed. a very easily scared kid. I was a very easily scared kid, so that dungeon scared me all the way through i was terrified Which one is the uh the the shadow fucking, temple uh, oh i thought it'd be the forest temple everybody seems to be afraid no, of that the one. forest temple didn't scare me as much compared to the shadow temple no that one was legit meant to be scary no i even had a hard time trying to get into the shadow temple because you had to acquire the hook shot but in order to have the hook shot you have to raise this guy underneath the grave and i'm like i was supposed to go there the whole time how was i supposed to know that <laughs> There's um another uh also another thing that they for the remakes in Majora's Mask they did a lot of patch ups and fix ups in the remake for Majora's Mask. Oh, does that help navigate where you're supposed to go? A little bit. Yeah, I still don't like that game. I I still try, I tried playing Majora's Mask and I'm like, okay, where's that first dungeon? Where's that first dungeon? I went and purchased one of those ma like one of those pieces of the map thing because it's all fogged up and I hear from Ellie, Brett, you're not supposed to buy that. I'm like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to do? <sighs> now I've heard that I heard that with Majora's Mask, you actually have to have a friend help you, and I'm sitting there thinking like, okay, that's a red flag. If you have to have a friend help you, that's a problem because the game cannot stand on its own. That's the thing. I'm the kind of guy who likes to take his time in a game. With Majora's Mask, you take too long, and, well, you dead, boil. Oh, yeah, no, just, like, 
I, I, like that's the other thing I was like tense and trying to f fit all the and figure out all these tasks within a certain amount of time and then restart by using the fucking song of time on the ocarina and then rinse and repeat. And I'm just like, this is so tedious as fuck. Well, You're what adds here. insult to injury is that I was told afterwards that if you play the song of time backwards, you slow down time. And again, how was I supposed to know that? And they said, oh, the scarecrow guy tells you. You mean that asshole who took a day away from me? No way I'm not talking to him. I would have never figured that out. You could have not agreed to do to stick around with him and then he would have told you. Look, I was in a hurry when I ran into him to retrieve the ocarina to begin with. Fair enough. But yeah, but it's just also um it's one of the few things they did one of that was like one of the issues there was the, of course their version of the water temple was also just as equally annoying and they fixed that up too like oh thank god you you want to know it always be my favorite zelda though what which one wind waker I oh, have yet yeah. to play more of Wind Waker. Like, I played a little bit of it, and I was fun. making some steady progress, but, like, this was at a time when... So when I had the GameCube, the game was borrowed mm -hmm. from a friend of my brother's, and there was mm -hmm. only so much time that we had. My brother was able to play through it like nothing, but I went through a steady pace because I was always nervous that I was going to get stuck in a dungeon or shit like that because I was kind of avoiding of zelda games because it's so easy for me to get stuck and just like where the fuck do i go what do i do um and oh, i just i just run out of patience um but with wind waker i was able to make some steady progress i just couldn't finish it on time wind waker arguably has one of the best stories in the series and i, I just love how animated the characters are especially oh, yeah. Link. his facial features were always priceless he actually I seemed agree. like he had a personality for once I, there's a few moments in the in Wind Waker that I still treasure to this day because they are such good moments. I I still one, it, mm -hmm. the the one of the first ones is like after you got the uh, the Furore Peril, mm -hmm. and you get to do the they, you get to watch the ceremony when Link joins in on the music is like oh that's so cute. Well, actually, my memory is similar to that. One of my favorite memories is after getting the game on Game GameCube. I stayed up late last night and I was playing the uh, the, the Forest Temple. You know, the one with the uh, the little what are those fucking things called again? The, the Forbidden Woods. Yeah, the Forbidden Woods in in Wind Waker. Just I I love that that like atmosphere. The music, that the music was good. The atmosphere is great, and it's you're, you're it's one of those things you remember as a kid playing late at night and just being sucked into the atmosphere into. See, this, this yeah. is why I like to stream games on Friday nights, because you kind of get that nostalgic feel that, you know, you got the weekend to yourself, and it, it's like, it's it's from a common trope, sort of. Yeah, yeah, it's a good memory. Yeah. Oh, um, another one of the games that from the series that I always enjoyed, no matter how many times I hear people say that it's, kind of, it's a ridiculous game to get overhyped about, is Twilight Princess. Twilight, Twilight Princess, Princess, like, I think it got a lot of attention because Link turns into a wolf, and people love wolves. It's a oh, fun yeah. game. I just... It does I don't have know. tedious moments. It, yeah, it got lot. very tedious at times. Like, I I don't know. the the Like, my favorite level was probably the Sky Temple because of fucking oh, double hook sky. shots. Yeah, you had fucking double hook shots, which I want them to bring back, because that was amazing. The double claw shots. The Thanks, double yes, fucking man. claw shots. So, and I've then, been uh, asked the question, sorry for changing uh, the subject, um, I was asked if I played the Four Swords on the GameCube. No, I unfortunately haven't. <laughs> Hardly anybody played that game. You needed like four people with like the yeah, same it's, 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 it's See, that's the thing that does irritate me about what Nintendo does sometimes, especially with Pokemon, that you have to acquire another friend to do things, whether it's to trade Pokemon or have a couple of friends over and play this one big game as a requirement. You mean, you already mean you've already spent your money purchasing a game. Why well, have to go to do the extra effort after that? I just think... Imagine, that... imagine being a sheltered only child... And having to get one of those games like I yeah, did. it's it's something that like that that's that's 
I'm kind of, I was kind of like that growing up. Like I had a brother and he had friends over and they did stuff, but I never had that opportunity to go out and like hang out with friends. Nope. So when I had something like Pokemon, <laughs> this is kind of the reason why collecting Pokemon or filling with the Pokedex was never my thing. Because let's take for instance, you know those two, uh, those two uh, fossils to pick in the uh, first. Um, oh yeah, Omnistar. Yeah. Um, Omnimite. Or, yeah. Um, I so um, I picked one of them, um, and I needed yeah. the Omnimite. I've been. Kabuto, Kabuto, I've yeah. been hounding my brother. I need that Omnimite to fill in my Pokedex. Oh, sorry, I gave it to a friend. I'll talk to him about it sometime afterwards. Did you talk to him? Yeah, he traded for something else. God damn it, dude! How the fuck am I supposed to fill in my Pokedex? So you know what I did. About right. a year later, I used a game shark where I summon all the Pokemon from the uh, the entire index <laughs> and just filled it up from there. There, game done. Caught all 151. <laughs> yeah. Okay, to be Damn. Fair, since I, I'm actually one of the few since I'm playing Pokemon right now, but for my case scenario, I don't normally focus on filling the decks. The only thing I focus on is one, the story of said game. And two, finding all the legendaries. Because that's my that's the one I only focus on collecting. If I, if uh, other than that, I don't care if I fill the Pokedex or not. Well, here's the thing. The one saving grace I had was I went to an after school program after after school, like this daycare place, and I would sometimes be able to trade with people there. So there was that at least with Pokemon anyway. But that was very rare. <laughs> I might add. Yeah, pardon my saltiness. Um, sometimes, no, you're fine, dude. Yeah, no, like, I, I can go really crazy when it comes to mechanics that are so cryptic to figure out, only for somebody to tell me, oh, you're supposed to do that, and it just makes you feel like a complete moron. Or I do I just, miss the... Like, it, that, that, that's why I get so defensive. I'm like, I was supposed to do that? How was I supposed to do that? You're supposed to do this, this, and that. How did the game expect me to, like, follow those steps precisely? Right. I yeah. do miss the days of the rumor mills on the, on the schoolyard, though, where you had, like, oh, if you lift up the truck, you'll find Mew or the fucking Pika Blue and all that other oh, shit. Oh, are, you are you talking about, like, using someone's imagination when you're at recess? Yeah, like, no, like, how there was all these rumors for Pokemon that you could do this or that, like, lift up the truck to find Mew or find Pika Blue, which was Meryl. Oh, dude, like... You know, uh, th th like, okay, so if we're going to talk about childhood memories, one of the funnest, like, childhood memories, and yes, call this premature, uh, somebody actually, like, drew out a map that's loosely based off of the recess ground, and we created our own little map of the Pokemon world, like, out in the grass field <laughs> areas are, like, mountain areas where, like, they call it the Mewtwo Mountain because the Pokemon first movie was out. Or if you're at the, um, if you're at the, what is it, the Jungle Gym, it's like a city, like Saffron City or something. So there was a, like, a crazy, like, world that was set up like that. And everybody was following him around, um, working with this map to use their imagination as in, like, catching different Pokemon. Aww. Yeah, no, like, that, that was a fun, uh. That was just a fun concept of an imagination. But as far as the rumors go, like, I didn't know anything about that. Um, but what I do remember is something that's outside of Pokemon, and this used to piss me off a lot. So um, I'm going to be guilty here. Um, my brother and I, we've on occasion explored for cheat codes just to dick around. There were some, like, there were some very bad rumors that... Uh, of certain like certain uh, abilities to unlock and mm -hmm. let's say for instance Star Fox 64 if you did a certain thing before the game begins you would be able to play a Star Wolf that was that was a fake code uh, mm -hmm. there was a certain yep. other code that was claimed to be something useful for a golden eye it was also fake and I remember the website too the website was called happy puppy and I started to have the impression this website is just Filled with false rumors of certain codes. Kiss my ass. There was one code that I was that I or one false rumor that I heard about long ago. Yeah. And it, it was like way back with sixty four with Smash Brothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That rumor about so that April Fool's joke about Sonic and Tails becoming playables. Oh dear. I remembered that. 
But to this day, I still find it ironically hilarious. Like, okay, even though that was just an old April Fool's joke from the Nintendo uh, magazine company, they unintentionally foreshadowed Sonic being in Smash Brothers. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing. A lot of, like, rumors in fighter games ended up being true later on. Like, there was the fucking whole, like, thing with... Uh... There was this one fighter in Mortal Kombat, I forget his name off the top of my head, but everybody kept thinking he was a real character in the game for the longest time because of these codes or whatever that they would talk about. Uh Like, only to find out, then the developer said later on, hey, how about we just make this character now that people keep thinking that this character exists and stuff. So that's how that happened. And then there was, like, Street Fighter, I think it was, like, Ken and Ryu's teacher, this, like evil bastard that was like teased and like talked about in past games where they didn't really have him as a character or something or just mistranslated and they end up making him a character. <laughs> <laughs> so while they have a lot of dumb tricks on us, some of them end up turning for the better. Shen Long, I think, yeah. I'm not sure about I don't think it was Reptile, it was uh Ardvac or something, I forget his name. It's in Mortal Kombat. Ugh, we've been in pre-show for quite a while. I think it's time to get started on streaming a game. Oh, what are yeah. you playing? Sonic 2. Oh, ah. okay, so you finally get the spin dash. Yeah. My, per- my Me and my sister's game that we used to play constantly, and my sister was the only one to beat it. <laughs> I only played that once. All right, well, you're, you're going to see more of it. Let's go uh, away from pre-show and uh, get started. <laughs> 